Well, for more on the climate negotiations, we spoke to Dr. Michael K. Dorsey. He's the co-founder and vice president of Strategy U.S. Climate Plan. He is in Bonn, and I began by asking him what has been achieved at the conference. In Bonn, at the climate talks, the real progress is really trying to move the world beyond the Paris Agreement. Most of the science is with us that the Paris Agreement was a great beginning, but was not sufficient really for what the world needs to really get out ahead of the unfolding climate crisis. So the conversation here in Bonn is how can we accelerate progress, how can we move in an aggressive way to get out ahead of the agreement that was put together in Paris. That's really what we're talking about here in Bonn. That's really what countries are here to do with civil society, with corporations, uh, all together to think about what can we do to increase ambition and increase and accelerate progress to moving really ahead out ahead of this unfolding cl climate crisis. Let's talk about the politics surrounding this alliance against coal use and the fact that it's really a rebuke against the United States uh, with President Trump vowing to pull out of the Paris Accord. Well, you know, I think, you know, the alliance against coal is a symbolic movement. It's an important symbol to send. But the fact is, is that the coal industry has been a dying industry over the past three decades. It's basically, right now, coal is an industry that's got one foot in the graveyard and another on the banana peel. And it's been that way for the past, you know, five, ten years. So coal is something of the past. It's a 20th century technology. Most folks know this. So really, an alliance against coal is a concerted kill on a dying sector. I think the future is really about renewables and the build out of that. And countries like China, India, South Africa, Brazil embracing renewables in a big, big way. Germany in particular has done a tremendous amount in the EU to install and build out renewables, but so much more can be done. Uh, we, can have, we can easily see three to five times more the growth uh, in renewables in Germany alone. Uh, that's true in, in other places. You know, even in the United States, the leading sort of renewable state in, in the U.S., uh, California, for example, could have similar build-outs without saturating the market in terms of renewables. So it's important that we send the signal that we're really countries are walking away from, from coal, but you still have those that are wedded to coal. And then the coal lobby in the EU, as well as the United States, is tremendously strong. It's captured the White House uh, in the United States. It's really shaping the politics on the ground. But the reality is that the pricing of renewables is fully, fully uh, favorable, uh, much more so than the old technologies. And that's really what's going to be carrying the day going forward. As you know, French President Emmanuel Macron is saying that Europe is leading the way to fight climate change and will make up for the U.S. withdrawing. How so? Well, you know, it's important, the signal that Macron is sending by stepping forward and saying that he's going to try to replace the U.S., but I would offer to you that replacing the U.S. is, is a good thing, certainly. Uh, we've got a really wayward, uh, lost delegation here without much leadership at all. Uh, but remember, being uh, the best in the game with uh, when your peers are so lackluster uh, isn't uh, all that special. The reality is, is that what's driving uh, folks like Macron and others uh, are the powerful forces of civil society organizations as well as the fact that we see this explosive change in the renewable energy sector. The prices are falling, and that's really what's really moving and propelling and keeping momentum behind folks like Macron.